Hi, this is Lauren Baker, founder of Search Engine Journal. Uh, with me today, I have uh, John Myers, the Chief Growth Officer of Deep Crawl. How's it going, John? Uh, it's going really well, Lauren. Good to, good to be here and looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, it's good to see you again. I think last time we, uh, we talked in person was at SEJ Summit at the Ham Yard in London. Yeah, and that was a little while ago, so we're long overdue a catch up in person. But obviously, it's great to, to sit here with you and uh, you know, chew the fat over some hot issues. But it uh, will be great to see you in person soon. So I hope we can make that happen. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, <clears throat> John, would you uh, take uh, the time to give a little bit of an introduction about yourself, to your background, and what your current position is at Deep Crawl? Now you're helping out there. Sure, of course. Um, I mean, obviously, my my name is John Myers. Background is very much. 20 years in the, the search industry now. So been around, seen a lot of things and, and gone through various guises across, you know, working for agencies and agency groups to some time at Yahoo and sort of the last seven or so years within the tech tech environment on technology platforms. Currently, obviously, going great guns at Deep Crawl, um, growing the business hard and working hard to achieve and succeed in what we do, but um, enjoying being back in the organic space and working for a great company as uh, Deep Crawl is. Fantastic. So. You've worked for uh, in-house at Yahoo, right? You worked on yep. the agency side and the tool side as well. Yeah, got the full, got the full bag, ticked all the boxes, as they say. <laughs> Triple threat. <laughs> Triple threat. So um, uh, today's theme uh, for today's uh, podcast, and for those of you that are viewing right now, we're also uh, recording live on Facebook Live to give you the opportunity uh, to ask questions, to send over um, any remarks, and um, this and that with John uh, will be then uh, downloading the uh, audio from the Facebook Live recording and recording on the Search Engine Nerds podcast. Um, uh, so John, uh, Deep Crawl, which is a partner of SEJ, um, you've been discussing um, the concept of the search universe. Would you like to go a little bit deeper into that? Sure, Lauren. I think, um, I mean, obviously for all of our users out there, I mean, we have an incredible amount of customers out there in the, in the search space in over 60 countries now, I believe. And, um, you know, obviously deep crawl is known well and, and known well as an enterprise level crawler that allows you to, to do technical SEO audits and, and understand what's wrong with your site as your site sits today with Google. Um, what we're trying to do now is push those boundaries a little bit further. And we're trying to just um, not step out of the crawling space because we absolutely want to stay true to what we do and, and what we believe in, which is to give you guys out there as, as you know, enterprise level SEO is the ability to get that powerful data back and understand what's going on from a, a technical SEO point of view when you crawl your website. What we're doing with the search universe piece, which is something which is starting to roll out in Q4 this year, is to think about what data can I add to my crawl reports? What value can I also ingest into while, whilst I'm crawling um, from an external data source point of view to allow us to better optimize and make better SEOs of what we do? So. Straight away, things that we're thinking about is backlink data. I mean, everybody loves good backlink. It's the currency of the web. Google loves to understand what's good, what's bad. So how can we take that backlink data and, and drag that down into the crawl as we run the crawl to let you guys understand the, the state of the union on backlinks? So um, everybody you know, does a lot of link cleanup and does a lot of you know, backlink review. And, and use, obviously, there's some great tools out there on the marketplace for that. So. At Deep Crawl, what we decided to do was to build a conduit to allow you to take in data from, say, Ahrefs, Moz, um, Majestic SEO, obviously. And as you run the crawl, pull in all the goodness of all of those links that are flowing into your website to see alongside the internal link structure and the internal site architecture where those links land, are those good quality links landing on high authority pages, if they're good quality links landing on low authority pages, you know, maybe you want to do a little bit of internal site architecture cleanup work and, and, you know, move those good links up the hierarchy. And the spin side of it as well, if they're poor quality links and you've got a lot of them, yes, you want to do the link cleanup piece, but let's see how they're affecting you from an internal site architecture point of view as well. So that's kind of the first part of the concept, if that makes sense, Lauren. Yeah, it does. It does. And, and, and <clears throat> to date, Deep Crawls had the ability to integrate Google Analytics information, correct? So yeah. you can see how many times that specific page has been visited, um, uh, other Google Analytics information around it. So when you're being able to make those decisions and say you're in, a, in an opportunity, say perhaps when you're pruning down a site, right? That mm -hmm. may have too much content out there and too many pages out there that are yeah. which is important, which is not. 
Also, the ability to um, <clears throat> identify cannibalization, right? When you have multiple pages right. around the same topic matter, um, which one is the most important? Which one is getting hit the most? And which ones that maybe that you would put more effort in from a content perspective are necessarily being being shadowed or hidden by others? So the ability yeah. to look at that information from an analytics standpoint mm -hmm. makes perfect sense. So now you're telling me that you'd be rolling out the ability for me to say, utilize my Majestic login or Majestic API yep. to, to see which of those pages are getting the most internal links, which of those pages are possibly getting other signals to, to make sound and data-driven decisions on, on what to do next. Absolutely, and I think obviously we talked about, I mentioned the backlink, it's kind of there's four sides to the search universe as we see it, and, and the black blinks would be one, and you, you're absolutely right with the GA one, it's, we, we're touching on what we're calling sort of the, uh, the consumer segment of, uh, of this idea, and the wonderful thing is obviously GA is readily available and out there, but we're also thinking about those, those larger enterprise solutions as well, things like Omniture, and the ability to pull in the Omniture data. I mean, I was right. uh, I was talking to an event the other day, and I was talking about obviously Google drives awareness, but for me, the consumer drives ROI. So we can you know, we can lead the traffic to the website, but then we've got to make sure that, that person when they're on the site they buy. So having that ability to see the most visited pages or the biggest dwell time pages or the most like products via GA or Omniture or something like that enables you to understand what is popular and what are the products that are being purchased. So. Again, when you're running a crawl, pull in that GA data, pull in that Omniture data, understand where those consumers are and understand, you know, not necessarily what are the most promoted pages to, to the likes of Google, um, actually what are the most promoted pages to, to the consumer today, the one that have the, the dollars in their pocket to purchase that stuff. And that's kind of step two of the search universe as we see it. Um, <laughs> yeah, which does make total sense. So, I mean, with myself as, as a publisher and also as an SEO, um, this sounds pretty intriguing to me because <clears throat> as a publisher, um, what, hap what can happen sometimes, and I see this happening a lot of the time in SEO with content strategies, is there's such a focus on the blog, right? To put yeah. out content yeah, yeah. that's relevant to the product. But yeah. then that content sits over here, right? And then the product, and the e-commerce uh, experience sits over here. And the two aren't necessarily always intertwined. So the ability to say, well, hey, you're getting you know, X thousand amounts of visits per month to this post yeah. about this product that you sell, but that traffic is not skipping or making its way over to the product page where they can actually purchase and make that yeah. e-commerce decision um, is is fairly important yeah. as well. I absolutely agree, mate. And I think it's for us, it's that ability to you can go and clean up your house and make your house, uh, you know, effectively the the Rolls Royce of Google indexation and have a, you know what you believe is all of the best pages indexing well and and being seen. But actually, that overlay or that fi that final overlay of the rubber stamping of the consumer, you can find pages that maybe don't even index or don't rank highly in Google that are getting an incredible amount of traffic. And there's a real opportunity there, you know, from your analytics data to then think, well, why is that page not indexing in Google? What's, you know, what's the issues from an SEO perspective and make sure that that page is, is, is implemented and promoted in the right way. And it could be something incredibly simple as to a reason as to why that page is not being seen in, in good light by Google. So being able to take that crawl data and, and understand that issue and, and bring in the consumer piece is, for me, is an incredibly powerful combination because it's, it's driving ROI. It's, it's not just doing the work, it's not just doing the indexation work and the SEO work, it's actually showing tangible ROI back from the organic traffic that we all know drives great ROI anyway, but actually having that ability to show that and, and take that to you, you know, the CMO on the, or your boss and say, look, this is, this is driving something which is pretty potent for us. Yeah, and you know, there's also the marriage in the search universe of SEO and paid search, right? And Absolutely. other offerings. So like one thing that you got me thinking of when you were discussing how people are finding your site, there are a lot of sites out there specifically in the e-commerce space, which may be doing, um, they're building out their sites, they're building out their site that's intended for Google, but then they're also building out micro pages, offer pages, email landing pages, and Absolutely. other pages which are not intended for Google and there's no communication whatsoever with the SEO team and that other team about that. So then at the end of the day, what happens is, 
Google has ways of finding that information outside of your typical site navigation yep. or even site maps. Um, so what can happen is multiple offer pages, multiple duplicate pages, pages that you do not intend to get ranked whatsoever, yeah. with different pricing information, different product information. 100%. Yes, start yeah. to get indexed, right? So yeah. the ability to pull all of that up as well, right? So this is, um, this is, this is kind of, uh, it's hitting home. I it, totally it, agree with you, and it's, it amazes me over the years of running, you know, running paid search teams and running SEO teams. You know, one of the first things I always tell the paid search team, building those pages that you mentioned, those specific landing pages to drive, you know, the paid, you know, the paid click advertising. Is, is submit them to obviously just, to, you know, you know, on the robust file, the no index at the end of the day. Um, you know, yeah. rule number one, just don't let those pages be in <clears> Google and you, you know that that traffic's come. But you, you're right, nine times out of 10, people forget to do that piece. Um, exactly. another, great, another great example, I mean, you, you mentioned obviously that you guys as a publisher at SCJ, um, you publish an incredible amount of content. We've seen it with other publishers maybe in, the old school, you know, publishing world and newspaper groups, where basically it's using something like Deep Crawl in the in the dev world because they're launching bunches of news pages all of the time, um, yeah. and they're wondering why stuff's not indexing or why their AMP pages are all over the place and stuff like that because they're not doing the pre crawl Q and A before right. launch in, in the dev environment and checking a the pages are right, the tags are in place. Um, everything's lined up for Google. The AMP page calls for Google are in place. We saw one a few weeks back where they've done a whole bunch of AMP work and then actually hadn't put the right tags in place to allow Google to, you know, effectively move forward and actually, in the, you know, take those AMP pages on board. So they thought they'd done the job and done everything well, and Google just wasn't pulling in any of the AMP pages because they simply just not told Google they were there. Um, so actually, using the crawling technology in that sense as well to do the pre-crawls and the the dev kind of world, we're seeing a lot of, um, a lot of you know good traction in that space as well. Um, and, and with so with deep crawl, you can set <clears throat> you can set the ability to crawl your site in a dev environment. Yeah, right? absolutely. So we, make a Google crawl. Yeah, make a replicate the crawl before you launch the site. We find it. Incredibly, a lot of as I say, these types of companies, big retailers that are maybe launching a new product section and want to kind of you know, crawl it before they launch it and put it out there on the site, or it could be, you know, just actually a site migration, just actually you've built the new site, you've done the site work, you want to check it before you, you push it out. We can crawl it in the dev environment and replicate how Google would see it. Um, so people get a lot of value from um, from doing that sort of side of things as well. Yeah, and that's one of the great things about a site migration, especially in the enterprise world, is typically when you're working on a large site migration, it gives you the ability to fix the errors that uh, possibly could not be um, taken care of by development beforehand. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be there to see that. <laughs> yeah. So the ability to send all of that in in in, in one um, one report, one piece of data, while it's in the dev environment, and while it's a high priority, yeah. right, is, yeah. is is fairly valuable. So another thing we were discussing before the call as well is the concept of toxic links, T links that are bad for you, links that should be disavowed. Um, yeah. One thing I had mentioned to you is that I have some clients that subscribe to a couple of tools out there that will send them alerts and they'll say, oh, you have you know 100 toxic links on your site. <laughs> Get rid of them right now. Right now. I also <laughs> told you about a disavow cleanup that I did that had domain level of like Yahoo and some CVS owned sites disavowed too because of some of those um, just because of false I guess false negatives in that reporting so how can one utilize a tool like deep crawl or, or, or whatnot to analyze um, those backlinks to make sure that they're they are or are not toxic before filing that ever important disavow no, absolutely. I think I think it's it's a subtly different thing for us. I mean, as, as I've mentioned earlier, there's some great link tools out there on the marketplace, um, and the ones that we've chosen to work with are, as I say, Mars, Ahrefs, and, and Majestic, um, because they just offer a huge scope and, and the ability to see the you know effectively the link universe as such. Um, the nuance which we're giving to our customers, because at the end of the day, we're a crawler, so we're we're looking to you know stay true to what we do, which is you know is technical SEO and the ability to crawl information ultimately and, and the bit which we want to ingest and bring into deep crawl is alongside our ability to crawl the internal site architecture and understand 
you know, how pages are interacting with each other. And we obviously give them all a score, which, you know, our deep rank score, which allows you to understand what, from an SEO perspective, are, are high quality and authority pages and what are low quality pages. And adding that data layer of backlinks to enable you to see what, you know, what kind of links are coming in on, on what pages within the site we feel is an incredibly powerful thing for an SEO to have because you can then start to think about, you know, what is the quality of the links? Are they good quality links? Are they toxic links? Right. Um, breaking them down and understanding the, the negative and positive effect that you'll see from those links, but then adding that extra layer, which is that ability to see where those links land in the site and see, you know, if you've got some incredibly good quality links from like, a, you know, Yahoo or CNET or something like that, that are landing on a level 47 page, um, and it's a non-authority page deep in the yeah. site, what, what's the point in my respects? You know, let's, let's think about how we do some, you know, easy link, you know, link cleanup, put some redirects in place, move those good quality links into the higher authority pages, you know, maybe subcategories on a retailer site or the top level domain type site. So you're actually, using it to do some positive work to actually you know you know re-engineer where you best use your backlinks because as we all know with big publishers over the years you just get people linking to you so you, you'll see a link you know a site with a million and a half links i can guarantee you half of those will just be organically fed links where people have just linked to the publisher probably on the brand term and it's just dropping into a whole manner of different places and they will be high quality links or really you know poor quality you know network type blog links or whatever it might be um, there's a nice opportunity just to understand how the whole ecosystem fits together and we want to kind of give our customers that opportunity um, to be able to really use, utilize best in breed backlink data for some great providers into crawl reports and, and take it to the next level where you can actually action data for. And as uh, an SEO slash content marketer slash link builder, I see the advantage there, right? Where yeah. if I have my deep crawl, crawl set to uh, say weekly, for example, mm -hmm. and then I see a sharp increase in links or some links that weren't intended, or maybe I see a piece that we had built a year ago, um, say on, I don't know, uh, say around New Year's, goes viral again the next New Year's and starts yeah. getting new links to it. And go, like, wow, look at this happening. And it sounds like the ability to export or send a C-suite level slash whatever level report uh, can yeah. all be done within the, the problem mechanism and make sure that we're getting the most value out of it. 100%, and I think the key in that as well is the a time frame. We, we allow you to trend the data. So if you're running a regular crawl, maybe, you know, weekly crawl, we, we relate it to previous crawls as well. So you get a trending mechanism that allows you to see, is it having a positive or negative effect, the work that I'm doing? Um, and if it's a negative effect, you can revert back and look at what your previous crawl, where it was, you know, it was, it was better quality was, and put that stuff back in place. See what the differences were. Um, so that ability to actually trend over time, and as you said, maybe up to a year, where you can look back at, you know, holiday, seasonal holiday type thing, and see the spike, and understand what what happened a year ago on that same set of pages, and what did change, or what hasn't changed, or anything like that. It, it's incredibly powerful to be able to kind of go back in time as such. Um, but also get a view of, am I doing the right thing? Is the work working you know, is, is in a positive nature? Um, so having that ability to do that trending piece as well for us is a, is a big thing. Um, perfect, perfect. This, that sounds quite interesting. So we've talked about Google Analytics data and we've discussed mm -hmm. link data a bit. Um, yeah. Where in the search universe does Google Search Console come into play? Well, I think that, that for me just comes into the analytics piece. I think, you know, I, I, put, I put Google Analytics in the, in the consumer space because we're looking at, you know, visitors and we're looking at, you know, how people are navigating. I think, you know, for me, GSC, we, we brought out a, we're probably about two months ago now, pretty advanced integration with GSC to allow you guys to actually just see all of your Google Search Console data within Deep Crawl and within the Deep Crawl environment. So I think Google did a really good job with GSC. I think it's a, it's a good re, you know, revisit on Webmaster Tools and they've built something which is you know, pretty handy and pretty useful for everybody out there. Um, and I, I can guarantee you probably most, you know, every SEO in the world is, has got a GSC account, probably like a GA account. But again, what we wanted to do was to take all of that goodness of the data that you see within GSC and bring that into the deep crawl crawl environment. So actually when you run a crawl, you just pull in the GSC data 
you see that alongside your crawl report data, you see how that's performing for your site and all of your internal architecture alongside all of the external factors of GSC. So it's just a value added layer just to give you the ability to, you know, take everything that every SEO probably logs in on a, on a Monday morning and looks at GSC and sees what's going on, but they'll actually directly and automatically marry that to your crawl data to allow you to really start making actionable changes and calls based against the GSC data on, you know, decisions that you will make to alter from a technical SEO perspective. So for us, it's a, it's the third segment of four of the, of the search universe, but it's a, it's a pretty powerful segment to actually want to play with and, and make sure you can see that data alongside the crawl data. Yeah, and, and we're also talking with GSC, which I, I still can't get used to calling it Google Search Console. <laughs> it's called GSC. I've gotten to the point with with some of the younger SEOs I work with. I'm like, just just check Webmaster Tools, and they're like, what's yeah. that? <laughs> <What's> that? <Yeah. laughs> yeah. like, I, mean, I just called it Webmaster Tools about two years ago. Yeah, so, yeah. Shows yeah. Where we stand in this world. So of course, uh, with GSC slash Webmaster Tools, you have your uh, your impression counts, yep. right? You have your click through percentage, which becomes more and more important. Overall positioning, yeah. Um, so uh, we're getting ranked data, whether it's a hundred percent accurate or not. And of course, Google Google Search Console brings in other attributes on the page, like rich snippets and featured snippets and other attributes and positioning. But at yep. least we have that data, right? So yeah, we can exactly see, say you're in position two, but your click through rate is a one point five or a 2.3 well then yeah. there's an issue right there's so yeah. we're no, not just talking about um technical but we're also talking about the ability within one suite to be able to look at that gwt data or the gsc data and and and, and see that hey you know maybe we have to work yeah. on the copy on this page maybe we have to work on the description or, or is the description entitled being pulled in correctly and if so why or why not right yeah. so there's all of this you know, and be able to see that on mass, you know, obviously if you're crawling a, a large site, you'd be able to see that at an aggregated level, but also down to a page level against your crawl data is is pretty compelling as far as I'm concerned. It's, um, I mean, I would say that because I work at DeepCrawl, but on the same note as an SEO, I would say it's, it's incredibly compelling to be able to marry those two data sources together yeah. and have that ability to, to look at it from the 10,000 foot view or to really drill down in the country specific and then page specific view yeah. and, and really see what's going on, as you say, from an impression share point of view. Yeah, I'm, I'm more and more impressed with Search Console um, day by day. If you compare that, and you've been around long enough to remember the days before <laughs> there was no Google. There was Google. nothing like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like shooting the dark and prey on a monthly yeah. basis and see what yeah, happens. Exactly, exactly. So if you compare the amount of data that Google is sharing with us now and the ability yeah. to to um, you know, uh, do some parameter filtering, uh, exclude pages um, temporarily, whatever it may be. It, it's this huge increase, and it's incredible data. And I, I again, I'm in there daily uh, just to look at things like uh, changes in impressions, trends, click through rates, yeah. etc. No, um, totally agree. Yeah. I suppose in the last, I mean, we've we've talked about three. I suppose the last thing to talk about is the fourth segment, as we see it, which is which is log file data. I mean, again, Absolutely. going going old school. I'm a big, I love log files, and I remember you know many years ago running you know batches of log files to understand what was going on before you, you know you had things like GA and stuff like that. You kind of went around the log file and looked at it that way. So and there was no crawlers or anything like that. So obviously, with you know the one thing that we knew as deep crawl that we we couldn't do. As a crawler, I mean, there's most things we can replicate as, a, as an enterprise crawler, but the one thing that you can't do without log files is, is look at Google Bot and look at Google Mobile Bot and look at how their Google is shaping through your site and how it's looking at various things. So we, we fundamentally saw that need to, to bring, you know, effectively log file data into the mix as well. So effectively what we've launched today is we've launched a very similar to the backlink solution, a, a conduit that allows you to take any, and I think this is one USP which we like is that we know everybody's got a, a log file solution out there in the marketplace. There's there's massive enterprise log files, there's low level, you know, freeware which you can run your log files through. And we didn't want to kind of launch something which said, hey, you've got to use this one to, you know, one log file solution, or you have to use our log file solution in order to run your log data. So effectively we've set up a, a drag and drop conduit where if you've got an output from any log file solution out there in the marketplace, be that 
high-level enterprise to things like Splunk, down to, uh, ironically, if you even want to spin it back the other way, you know, Screaming Frog, who's in the same space as us. If you if you want to run uh, a Screaming Frog, Screaming Frog log file output and push it in the deep crawl, you can. So we're we're giving you the ability to take any log file output, ingest the log file output to look at things like Google Bot and Google Mobile Bot into your crawl report as well. So you can then get the feel for how Google's perceiving the pages and how Google is navigating through the pages. And again, as an SEO, being able to understand how Google sees your site, um, again, gives another powerful data layer alongside how well the site is optimized for Google um, to make, you know, start treating Google bot and maybe start educating Google bot a little bit and understanding why it's looking at certain things and not looking or giving, you know, the time of day to the things that you really wanted to look at. Um, so we've, um, We've built that out kind of thing to to allow you to do that, and we're, we're looking at API solutions as well to allow you to actually just automate the whole process to um, to get that log file data in there as well. How important would you say it is for a company to give their SEO the the access to their log file data? I think I mean I think it's incredibly important. I mean you you're always going to struggle in some cases, basically on some companies, you know, large you know maybe large enterprise yeah. level companies that lock and secure everything down. Um, you, you probably just, you'll, you'll be struggling to get that data off them. But if, if I was to say how important it is, I think it's incredibly important to have that data. Um, and the way that we've looked at it is not to just go, right, here's a massive data drop of absolutely everything, because we don't need that. We just kind of want the, the search engine bits. We don't yeah. need all the other stuff, because a log file can be get incredibly large and bloated based on the size of the site. Um, and you don't have to want to kind of wheel through all of that stuff to just get to the bit that you truly want. Um, mm -hmm. So what we're doing is when you bring when we bring in the file, we're extracting the the Google data and the search engine data for, for Google Bot and Mobile Bot and so on and so on, um, and just running that stuff into deep crawls, just so you actually get the bit that you really need to make the difference. Rather, you know, which is probably five to ten percent of the log file, and getting rid of the the other part of it and make it, try to make your lives easier effectively um, so we don't have to kind of go through that whole process. So with an international client base, you also have Bing, you also have Yandex, you also have some other search engines as well. Mm -hmm. Do you have the ability to pick and choose what can be brought in to, to deep call for analysis? That's the plan. I mean, ultimately, yeah. you know, Google's, Google's the big kahuna, and we, we kind of train to just, when we sit in these worlds, is to just talk about Google, but absolutely, there's life outside of Google, as you say, and there's, yeah. there's other engines. So being able to extract how those sites, those guys are coming in as well is, is an absolute must for me, too. Um, you know, that's, that's how we're looking at it. It's, um, yeah, I guess it's good, you know, well pulled up, mate. It's, um, I think it's, yeah, we get too honed in talking just about the Google thing. Um, but it, for me, it's any search engine. It's being able to see and understand how search engines are performing as a whole for your site. Yeah, typically, if you're doing well on Google, you're doing well on other You're doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's interesting, though, uh, speaking about, um, you know, you having Yahoo on your resume, um, yeah. I, I, I do work uh, with, a, with a client in the senior citizen space who gets sometimes 30 to 35% traffic coming from the Bing, Yahoo, Monster. Oh, yeah. coming from Oath, right? Oath. Yeah, AOL, the AOL Yahoo yeah. Corporation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, I, could, I could believe that. I mean, I, I, was, I was at Yahoo for a few years kind of thing and, and, and got involved in a few bits and pieces, but I think it's just typically what that is, is the, the users of an AOL and a Yahoo and stuff are a slightly older demographic. It, it comes from the heritage of the old, the old dial-up worlds when, you know, they're effectively ISP supported by Yahoo and support by AOL and you access your mail via them. And they still got an incredible um, loyal user base that access them via those sorts of um, scenarios. So the, you know, we could always see the older demographic and the older, more affluent demographic. You used to do pretty well out of, out of Yahoo or, or Microsoft or AOL at the time, just because of the nature of the, 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 the heresy of the, the user that used to be involved with those sites. The Google would came through as a bit more of a young, Hip, trendy kind of thing to use, and I'm, I mean, obviously, been around long enough now, and um, you know, there's a there's a good age spread um, on the search engines, but it's um, yeah, there's still those things still work. It still happens. That reminds me now that Siri is serving, Siri is now ser serving Google results, so I'll have to look and see how that data changes. By the way, <laughs> um, great. Uh, are there any other additional? 
components of the search universe? No, I think we've, we've, we've covered the four. Um, I think for us, as I say, just to, to say again, we're staying true to how we do a deep crawl, which is enterprise level scalable crawling, but adding these data layers and giving you the ability to ingest these data layers into, you know, deep crawl data as you crawl those sites, I think for us gives you that incredibly powerful data layer. Um, and obviously just the way that deep crawl is built on an API where we actually ingest the data, we can push the data as well. So once all that data is housed in the API, if you guys, you know, want to basically build reports or dashboards or, you know, competitor analysis or market analysis and, and stuff like that, there's an incredibly easy way just to push that data and all that riches and goodness that you've got from going through bringing it all together out into actionable places where you might actually want to start portraying it in certain ways. Fantastic. Well, John, it's been a pleasure having you um, and the Deep Crawl yeah. team here today on this yeah. Facebook Live slash recording of Search Engine Journals, Search Engine Nerds. Anything you'd like to say before you sign off or where our listeners and viewers can find you online? Yeah, I mean, obviously, come and come and check out our product. Come and find us at uh, www.deepcrawl.com and um, sign up, get a free trial. Have a few URLs on us and have a play and um, see what you think of the, the, the crawl data. You can have a play with some of the things that I mentioned today and integrate some GA or GSC or some backlink data in there and, you know, see what I'm actually talking about and see if it works for you. But um, all in all, just come and, come and play and see, see what you think. And, and obviously, thanks for having me, Lauren. And um, Absolutely. thanks for taking the time. Always great to talk to you. And um, I look forward to seeing you in person soon. Will you be at PubCon? I'm not a PubCon, so oh. we'll, have to find, we'll have to find another one. <laughs> okay, okay then that might be a good thing. All right. Thank you very much, John. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, um, and This is the team Cheers. signing off at uh, Search Engine Nerds.